This is part 82 of jQuery tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to retrieve tooltip tags from a database table and display it using jQuery tooltip widget. So here is what we want to achieve. Notice we've got a database table here with two columns. The first column contains the field names and the second column contains the tooltip text associated with that field. On the right hand side, we have a web form with three fields, first name, last name and department. Now, we want to retrieve the tooltip text associated with these fields from this database table and display that using jQuery tooltip widget. So the first step here is to create this database table, which I have already done. And here is the create table script. This script is going to insert the test data. I've already executed this script. So the next step is to create a stored procedure, which is going to retrieve the tooltip text by field name. So let's go ahead and create that stored procedure. So let's call this SP get tooltip. And this stored procedure is going to have an input parameter. Let's call that field name. And the data type is going to be nware care of 50. So we give this stored procedure a field name and the procedure should return us, you know, the respective tooltip text for that field. So what do we want to do? We want to retrieve both the columns from TBL tooltip table where field name equals at field name. So whatever value we pass for this uh, input parameter. So pretty straightforward stored procedure there. And let's quickly test this stored procedure. For example, let's pass first name as the field. So now when we execute the stored procedure, it should return as the tooltip text associated with first name field. So our stored procedure is working. So that's those are the two steps from the database side. Now let's flip to our web application. So within the web application, the first thing that we need to do is add a connection string to our sample DB database, which I have already done. The next step is to create a class that's going to represent this database table. So let me go ahead and add a class file to our project. And let's call this tooltip.cs. And this class is going to have two auto uh, implemented properties, both of them of type string. So let's call the first one field name, get and set accessors. Similarly, another property and let's call this tooltip text. Okay, a very simple class with two auto implemented properties. The next step is to add a web service and this web service is going to retrieve the database data from our tooltip table. And let's name our web service tooltip service. All right, so we want this web service to be called from script. So I'm going to uncomment this attribute right here. And let's change the name of this function. Let's call this function get tooltip. And this function is actually not going to return anything. Okay, so I'm going to change the return type to void. And within the body of the function, we're going to write some ADO.NET code to retrieve the tooltip data from the database table. For that, first let's bring in the required ADO.NET namespaces. We need system.configuration, we need system.data, and we also need system.data.sql client. In the interest of time, I have already typed the required ADO.NET code, so let's go ahead and copy that from this notepad and paste that inside our get tooltip function. And if you look at this code, this is straightforward ADO.NET code. And one important thing here is that this method needs a parameter. So we give this function a field name and this function is going to return us the tooltip text associated with that field name. So let's go ahead and include a parameter. Let's call that field name. All right, so what are we doing here? We are reading the connection string from web.config file, and then we are creating an instance of the tooltip class. So we have created this tooltip class here with two properties, field name and tooltip text. So here we are creating an instance of that class, and then we are creating a SQL connection object using the connection string that we read from the web.config file, and then we are creating a SQL command object. So using this command object, we are actually executing the stored procedure 
that we have just written, which is sp get tooltip. So since this command object is executing a stored procedure, we have to tell that to the command object. And we are doing that by using the command type property of the command object. Since this stored procedure has got a parameter, we need to send you know a value for that parameter. So we are creating a SQL parameter object here, specifying its name and value. So where is the value coming from? The value is coming from this parameter. And then here we are associating the parameter with the command object using the parameters collection property. And then we are opening the connection, executing the command. Whatever result we get back, we are storing in this reader object. And while we are looping through, we are retrieving the um, you know field name and tooltip text from the reader and populating the respective properties of the tooltip object that we have created here. So now we have to write that object to the output stream. So let's write it in JSON format. So we need to serialize this object to JSON format. And to do that, I'm going to use JavaScript serializer class. That class is present in a different namespace, which is system.web.script.serialization. So now let's go ahead and create an instance of JavaScript serializer class. So JavaScript serializer, let's call that JS equals new JavaScript serializer. Now, what do we want to do? We want to serialize this tooltip object that we have created, right? So let's pass that to this function. And whatever JSON string this function is going to return, we want to write it to the response stream. So I'm going to use context.response.write. All right, so that's our web service. Let's go ahead and quickly test our web service. So we give this web service the field name, and it should return us the um, tooltip text in JSON format. So for example, let's pass first name, and let's invoke that. And look at that. We get the field name back, which is first name, and tooltip text, your first name as shown in Passport. So our web service is working. Now all that is left is to write the required jQuery code. So let's go ahead and do that. So within webform1.aspx, I already have you know, the required HTML to produce this layout. So basically, I have a table here. And within the table, I've got three table rows. And each table row has got two TDs. The first TD contains the literal text. And the second TD contains a text box. The same is the case for all the TRs. Okay? And the important thing to keep in mind here is that notice we have a class attribute set to display tooltip. In a bit, we'll understand the purpose of that class. And again, another important thing is we need to set the title attribute. Otherwise, it will not work. So basically, we have the title attribute set, but it is initialized to an empty string. Okay. So that's the HTML. With this HTML, when we view the page in the browser, this is how it looks like. Now, you know, when we hover the mouse over the respective text boxes, we want the tooltip, you know, to be retrieved from the database and display it. All right. So now within the script section, we have the ready function wired up. So here I'm actually going to write a JavaScript function. Okay, and let's call this function get tooltip. So what is this function going to do? It's going to make an Ajax call and retrieve tooltip text uh, from the database okay, by calling the web service. So I'm going to use the Ajax function. And let's go ahead and specify our options. Before that, let's actually create a variable. Um, let's call it return value, the value that we want to return. And I'm going to initialize that to an empty string. okay. So let's configure our Ajax request. So the first thing that we need to specify is the URL that we want to make the request to. So basically, we want to call our tooltip service.asmx. So let's copy the name of the service. And within that service, we have got a function. The name of the function is get tooltip. So that's what we want to call. So let's copy the function name. And to that URL, we want to issue a POST request. So I'm going to specify the method as POST. And obviously, this function expects a parameter. 
right? We need to pass some data to this function. And the name of the parameter is field name. So let's copy that. And the data that we want to pass is, you know, we have to pass a value for field name. And where is that going to come from? Now, I'm going to use here dollar this. In a bit, you'll understand, you know, what this means. Dollar this, and on that, I'm going to call the attr function dot attr and I want the id attribute value okay so now this is going to represent one of these three text boxes first name last name or department and if you look at the id of these fields look at them first name last name department which match with what we have as the field name in this database table. So, you know, whenever we want to display the tooltip of the first name text box, then, you know, this here is going to represent that first name text box and we are retrieving the ID attribute value. So that is going to give us the field name. And for that field name, we want to retrieve the field name text from the database table. So this is going to represent, you know, one of these three text boxes in a bit that will be clear if it's not at the moment. Okay, so that's the data that we want to pass to the server. And the data type that we are expecting back from the server is JSON. And when the request completes successfully, we want to associate a callback function. This function is going to receive the tooltip object in a JSON format. Okay, so now what do we want to do? We want to initialize the string with tooltip text. So return value equals data dot. And if you look at our tooltip object, that's what will be serialized to a JSON format. And that object has got two properties, field name and tooltip text. And we are interested in tooltip text property value. So I am going to copy that property and retrieve its value from the data object and initialize this variable. Okay. So after that, what we want to do is simply return the variable that contains the tooltip text. Okay, so this function is straightforward. It's making an AJAX call, you know, passing it a field name, retrieving the field, um, you know, respective field tooltip text, populating in this variable um, return value, and returning that back. Okay, so now we have to call the tooltip function, right? So now if you look at these text boxes, all of them have the same CSS class, which is display tooltip. Okay. So for selecting all these text boxes, I have given that CSS class. Okay. So let's copy that class name. Let's use the CSS jQuery selector to find all those text boxes. So dollar, and I want to find all the elements that have got this display tooltip class. And on that, I'm going to call tooltip function. And remember, in the previous video session, we discussed this tooltip function has got several options. And one of the options is content, using which we can specify the content for our tooltip. And this content can be a string, you know, something like ABC, or it can be a function which returns a string. So I have a function here, get tooltip. So that is the function, okay? So this is the function that we are calling and this is going to represent the text box for which we want to display the tooltip. And we are reading its ID, meaning we'll get the field name and it's, this function is going to return the tooltip text of that respective field, all right? So let's save these changes and run this one more time. Now, look at this, this is not going to work. And the reason for that is very simple. The reason is, from an AJAX request, you cannot return a value like this, okay? Because what happens is this request will be executed asynchronously, meaning this is a database call that we are making, right? So obviously this is going to take a bit longer, right? So this code will not be ex executed in a synchronous fashion. So it will issue an AJAX request and then it will continue its execution because it's an AJAX request, so it will come to this line and return the return value variable. So here we are return, we are initializing this variable with an empty string. We are making an asynchronous request to the database. 
So the request is sent to the database. While the database is processing, the code will not wait for that request to come back. It will continue to the next line and return whatever it has at that point in time. So at the moment, it, has, it is initialized to an empty string. So it's going to return an empty string. That's why we don't get any tooltip value. Okay. Now to fix this, make this request synchronous. And to make the request synchronous, all you need to do is set the async option to false. Okay, so basically we are making this a synchronous request, meaning, you know, after issuing the request, it will wait until the request completes and then initialize this variable and then execute this last line, which returns the value. Okay, so let's save those changes. Let's run it one more time. Now look at this. Your first name as shown in passport your last name as shown in passport and your full department name. So now it's working as expected. So here we have the web service code. Here we've got the HTML and the jQuery code. Thank you for listening and have a great day.